Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm uh, very glad uh, to be sharing this with you today. We are going to speak about Tulsa, um, an amazing city in Oklahoma uh, that's doing a lot of things, and we're going to learn about this today uh, from two people who are the key you know, um, player in Tulsa, uh, Ken Levitt and Michael Bash. So we are going to learn about them, uh, their story, uh, why they decided you know, to do all of this for the city, and and how they are doing it. Ken, Mike, welcome. Uh, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Um, so let's let's get started. Like, um, can you tell us about you and what's your link uh, with Tulsa? Great, it's terrific to be here. Thanks so much, uh, Sylvain, for this opportunity. Uh, uh, I lead the George Kaiser Family Foundation, and we're just so honored to be in this very exciting and powerful partnership with Holberton. So honored that Tulsa could be one of the, the, the campuses in, in, in your constellation. Uh, I grew up here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, I went away for college and law school on the East Coast and worked in politics a little bit in Washington uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Senate and then later in the, in the Clinton years. But I keep kind of finding myself coming back to my hometown of Tulsa uh, for, for different opportunities throughout life. And in the last uh, 15 years, I've, I've been working with uh, George Kaiser and the creation of the George Kaiser Family Foundation. Uh, and it's, our central mission is about intervening in the cycle of poverty and creating opportunity for families. But we're also trying to create a more diverse, energetic, vibrant community here in Tulsa. And working together with Holberton, in my mind, is, serves both those goals. Uh, one is the goal of opportunity and the goal of a stronger uh, more prosperous and, and uh, energetic Tulsa. So it's been a fun journey that we've bit just begun and I'm very excited about the future. Thank you, Ken. Mike, your turn. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Michael Bosch. Um, my, uh, I run a Tento Capital here in Tulsa. I'm actually uh, not from here originally. I was born in San Francisco and raised in Los Angeles and lived in New York, London, and Tel Aviv before I, I found my home and uh, here in Tulsa. And uh, my background's in startups on, across a variety of different sectors from coffee shops to product manufacturing to mobile user acquisition. Um, I left the private sector to work on Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016. Uh, we lost. And, uh, and that kind of was the beginning of making my way to Tulsa, the little did I know it. I kind of visited a, a friend of mine uh, who fell in love with a girl from here and um, got to meet Ken Levitt and, and the folks at the George Kaiser Family Foundation and really kind of found myself um, very aligned with the mission of addressing intergenerational poverty and leveling the playing field for every single child at birth. Uh, the foundation was looking at ways to kind of, you know, diversify the economy um, and get into 21st century jobs and tech and attract companies and innovation to Tulsa. And, and that, that was an area that I, I had some background in. And um, the big kind of problem that we're looking to solve is, you know, can we make social change through economic opportunity? And, and we are working on that. And we see Holberton as a really big partner for helping create economic opportunity here in Tulsa. And we're, we're excited and grateful you're here and grateful to be here. Thanks, Guy. Um, Ken, like, could you, you've, you've been living in the city for a while, and I think a lot of uh, happened in the last decades. Uh, so because our audience may not know about the history of the city, uh, could you, you know, give us like a brief rundown sure. of what happened? And, and sure, I'll do. A, I'll I'll do a hundred years in thirty seconds or a minute. But you know, we're uh, Tulsa has a, a kind of a fascinating history. It was actually, you know, it, it was a Oklahoma was a place where the Indian tribes were basically relocated to, and our we have a rich tribal history. In fact, Tulsa is the home of. Uh, three of the great, what they call the civilized tribes, which is kind of a peculiar name, but but the, the Osage, Cherokee, and Creek, and there's a lot of native history, but things really radically changed with the, the discovery of oil uh, in, the, in the Tulsa area, and really from the 1920s through the 60s was just really a booming kind of economy of, of, and growth in the Tulsa area, and really, and, and obviously this predates, uh, you know, our, our today's changing energy climate. But, but uh, as, the, as the corporate headquarters of oil companies move to, the, to bigger cities like Houston, and, and as it became increasingly important 
uh, to diversify our, our economy. Tulsa has, uh, has had its challenges as far as maintaining the growth that it had in the early part of, of, the, of, the, of the 20th century. So we're in the process of diversifying our economy, kind of re, re, recreating uh, our identity uh, to be more uh, friendly for, for tech and a startup culture. Uh, but we've always, we've benefited greatly from our rich heritage in the energy industry. We've got uh, very strong foundations that have served our social services, our hospitals, our libraries. We've built up a kind of a civic society that is really more, uh, more typical for a city that would be millions of people, as far as our museums, uh, our, our infrastructure. But in order to maintain this, we, we've got to see a real change in, our, in, our, in, in the growth of our community over the next 20 years to, to sustain it and, and move forward in a creative way. So yeah, indeed, like uh, Tulsa was known as the oil capital of the world. Uh, that's uh, you know, a term that was coined. And, uh, and so, you know, we've heard from uh, Mike uh, saying how inspired he was by um, you know, the, the mission and the, the, the vision of uh, the George Kaiser Family Foundation. Um, can you like briefly tell us what the, the mission um, of, of the foundation? Yeah, and, and uh, George Kaiser is kind of a classic Oklahoma story in, in, in many ways. It's different also in, the, in that um, it's a family that, that moved here uh, to escape Nazi Germany. So uh, it wasn't part of that booming, booming oil business in the 20s. It came uh, in the World War II era. The family was a Jewish family escaping, escaping the Nazis uh, in Germany. Spent some time in London and then came here to start a small uh, oil and gas company that, that George ultimately took over uh, when uh, he was a young young man after uh, Harvard Harvard Business School, but uh, achieved a lot of success in oil and gas and banking uh, and other investments. And really, you know, about 15 years ago, decided, uh, as he would put it, maybe to focus less on the piling up of the resources and more of the spending down of the resources. And uh, George uh, Kaiser really. Uh, undertook a very analytic approach. He calls it a B-school approach and just really rank ordering, you know, the highest and best uses of philanthropic capital and really uh, what he really turned to or, fo or decided to focus on is creating and helping to realize the, the American ideal of equal opportunity for all. Uh, an ideal that, uh, an ideal that is not exclusively American, and in fact, many countries in Europe are probably uh, achieving it to a greater degree than we are in the United States today. But the notion of, of that every person is born equal and every person deserves an equal shot at success. And so we've looked at a lot of ways to try to make that opportunity real, and education is obviously, you know, front and center. Yeah, achieving uh, such a goal is ambitious, uh, especially, you know, as a private organization and philanthropy. Uh, it's very noble and uh, you know, I think so far you are doing a great job and uh, um, actually I'd, I'd love to hear from you, Mike. You said you were, again, like inspired by, by this mission that, um, that can just describe on a very high level. Like what are the sp specifics of this mission and like, like, like the more concrete things that um, you know, like att attracted you um, when you decided to join and then how it's been uh, developing, um, you know, for the, the year that you were in Tulsa. So for me, I remember a very distinct moment when I visited in September 2017. Uh, you know, I came to town expecting kind of like the Dust Bowl um, and cowboys walking around. And I remember walking around the Arts District and going to this co-working space called 36 Degrees North and kind of seeing all the bars and restaurants and young people and kind of being pleasantly surprised and then going to this park uh, that the foundation along, among, along with a bunch of other kind of partners uh, built called The Gathering Place. And it was September 17 and the park was supposed to open September 2018. And so it wasn't completely done. I was standing on a pile of, a, a hill of dirt and, a, and, and you know, they were filling in a, a pond and you could kind of just feel like something big is just about to happen here is like the best way I would describe it. And it, it kind of felt like, I remember I, I, I thought so, but I wasn't so sure. And I, I, I kind of proposed to the foundation and another organization, I, you know, I want to bring a bunch of my friends here. And 
I think a lot of people might see the same way. We ended up bringing 58 people to town and, and actually some of them ended up moving here and, and everyone kind of left pretty inspired and there's been all sorts of connectivity since then from that. But, but you know, I think Tulsa is at a kind of inflection point in which all the foundation, of the, the George Kaiser Family Foundation, but all the, the George Kaiser Family Foundation, the city, other philanthropic partners, the private sector have kind of all aligned and built this kind of platform of, for positive change. Um, and as it pertains to me, really in like the kind of innovation and entrepreneurship sector and technology sector, uh, the foundation recently, um, along with the Tulsa Innovation Labs group, um, got a big report from McKinsey to kind of help them focus on, on areas that they think have opportunity for growth, areas like the future of energy or the future of health technology and, and, and telemedicine and analytics and drones. And, and they're really starting to be a level of thought and intention and organization around getting the, you know, moving the economy forward and not just from a jobs perspective, but from a workforce perspective um, with, with programs like Holberton. And, you know, for me, I feel like, you know, I, I loved living in New York and LA and Tel Aviv and those are great cities, but they've already kind of been built. And I feel like we are right now at the point where we're deciding Tulsa's future and building it together. And that to me is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Great, thank you. I, I love this pile of dirt and the, the energy that you could feel actually when I had the chance to come to Tulsa, I felt the same energy from the community. It was just amazing. I, I think that it, it, it is a it is kind of a nice draw for for people who are at a kind of point in their lives where they're thinking about what kind of impact that they want to make. I I, I feel like the unit of size of a, of a Tulsa, uh, and there are obviously other cities like this uh, in in the country, uh, is such that a person can come uh, and and plug in very quickly and see the kind of impact they have to make a community stronger. Uh, uh, more just, uh, more fair, more good, uh, and that that uh, that maybe if you're in a city of you know five million people, you're you're it's a harder to have that sense of connectedness uh, of the place that's that's five hundred thousand to a million maybe, or that's got that's on a good trajectory. A, a person can feel that they're they're in the business or in the experience of city building or community building or even state building, which I think in a state the size of Oklahoma, you, you also feel to some degree that you're, uh, you're, 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 a bit, you're still in a kind of a pioneering phase or, 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 or defining, you're having a defining impact. And that's, that's kind of exciting. And Mike, Mike was attracted to that. And he, uh, after only a little bit of time, is, is actually having a defining impact on our community, which is exciting, as will Holberton. Yeah, it makes me think about uh, basically the difference between jo joining a startup and having all that great impact and feeling that you make a difference versus working for a large corporation where, yeah, the company itself is having a, a large impact, but you don't see much of your work being exposed. Mm -hmm. um, I, and, and, I, and I think I really like the, the way that uh, you are all going um, about empowering the local community uh, to enjoy um, you know social change and economic opportunities and uh, Max often speaks about these uh, three pillars uh, of the strategy uh, which are talent um, economic opportunities and quality of life um, Mike could you go a little bit about you know like what are the initiatives and all of the three pillars yeah um, so on the talent side um, you know there's the overall thought is if people come to Tulsa, we think that they would like it. And for the people that are here, if they can have the right professional opportunity, we think that they would stay. And, and that thesis has kind of proven to be true. There's actually a program that, that, that rolled out that kind of um, checks both boxes called Tulsa Remote, which pays remote workers $10,000 a year to move to Tulsa. Not only that, it plugs them in with the community and with each other and has events and, and really kind of um, helps make it very easy for them from even helping them to find housing when they arrive. Um, and so really just kind of, you know, a way to at scale, and, and I kid not, and, and Ken might know the exact number, but it's been 25-ish thousand applicants in 18 months. I mean, it's, it's a powerful number of people, wow. hundreds of people are having moved. And, um, you know, that's just one example. You know, you have, of course, Holberton. Um, we have a program partnership with Foundry College, which is, which is um, offering Tolson's um, a kind of subsidized education and project management, as well as Salesforce admin 
um, to hopefully place them in remote jobs, making you know 55 to 65K here in Tulsa. We're working with a new partner um, in, in launching a concept called Satellite, which is doing the same kind of work for sales and customer success training. Um, and so really kind of thinking about, you know, how do we, you know, the future of, of traditional universities is very unknown. And so how do we like kind of supplement other programs for our local Tulsans to be able to go from wherever they are today to the economy of the future? Um, and that being said, though, having strong research is also a really Im important component. And we partnered with Team 8 and, and Tulsa University to build this like very sophisticated cybersecurity PhD research program. Uh, and quietly, and I don't want to say too much, but to you may or may not be one of the, if not the largest provider of cybersecurity talent to the National Security Administration, but I didn't say that. And, um, and so, you know, we see that as a real opportunity to, to create an industry around here, here in town. Um, and, and the other component is, you know, we also have found, you know, even in the three years that I've kind of been working closely with the foundation, um, companies have had a real different tune in their, in their openness to expanding to Tulsa. And so, you know, uh, the, the most obvious example will be this recent story with Tesla um, in which, you know, Elon Musk announced he's opening a factory in the middle of the country in March and, and they, they were pretty far along with a bunch of other places. And, you know, we kind of threw our hat in the ring and, uh, and kind of, you know, gave them a little quick uh, download as to what's going on here. And then they came here and checked it out. And, you know, I don't think too many people would have bet that the last two horses in the race might have been, you know, Tulsa and Austin. And we felt like we really kind of might have might have won in a different in a different in a different you know certain things happened a different way it was it was we felt it to be pretty close and, and we've had a, several other companies start to make their first hires here and with with you know covid kind of you know democratizing where people work in general we think places like tulsa have have incredible tailwinds and opportunity to kind of capture a lot of these tech companies and other companies that realize they no longer need to all be in the same building or same room and that their employees are making sixty five thousand dollars a year that might be really struggling in a place like san francisco or new york could actually be homeowners here in town and so you know we feel um we feel well positioned for like what the next decade looks like, you know, as you know, my, I would say, and I'll, you know, I'll stop talking is when I think to myself about macro, macro, you know, mile high from, from the U S I think New York really want was the, the, the one in terms of like, you know, MVP for the 2001 to 2010 post nine 11 under Michael Bloomberg in terms of where they took New York and where it ended. And I think Texas probably, you know, you could argue might've won 2011 to 2020 in terms of look how many corporations move there, people move there and all, all, all the success in Texas. And I think you could see a complete reshuffle from, t from 2021, which Tulsa has a huge event to kick off in terms of the you know, milestone in history of the centennial on the Wall Street race massacre that happened here in 1921. And using that as a catalyst for real, like kind of citywide unified change forward um, into what the, the 2020s will look like. And we think this could be our moment. And, and there's a lot of people moving here that kind of feel the same way. Uh, you know, I think you've, you've built amazing um, opportunity to um, you know, make the decision of people moving to Tulsa easier. Uh, you know, the Tulsa remote program is an amazing one. I know you've built, uh, you've launched recently a program for recent college graduates where you provide a living uh, stipend of 40K uh, for any um, college students who decide to move to Tulsa and work for a service oriented company. Uh, for Holberton School, you also offer a living assistance fund to make sure that people can uh, study and uh, you know not have to worry about their income. So all of this is about bringing this talent. And then as Mike said, like um, our world is accelerating in the way that workforce is distributed, people can work remote. Um, I'd like to know if you think that COVID, um, you know, how does COVID plays in this strategy that you guys have been starting this year, but now there is this pandemic that is here to stay. Yeah, well, maybe uh, I'll hit it from a couple of different angles. I, I'll reinforce the your emphasis on on talent, talent development, talent attraction. You know, I the world of uh, economic development seems very traditionally uh, focused on recruiting companies, responding to uh, uh, corporate you know requests for proposals, throwing money at them to to bring to bring an office, a warehouse. A, uh, you know, a, a service center, a call center to their community. And I, I think we've really 
we wanted to take a different approach that it's about people. It's about motivated people and talented people and, and people that, uh, that want to have, have a big impact. I, I know, and, and you as a, as, a, as a startup entrepreneur, you know the power of one incredible person can, can transform a country, can transform a community. You know, my, my friend Mike Bosch here has had a transformative impact on, 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 in Tulsa. He's one human being. Our, our school superintendent is a, is a talent magnet herself and a, and a great change agent. So I, I think, you know, bringing, bringing people here um, uh, who can make a great difference is a very powerful strategy. Obviously, so is investing in people who are already here and part of our community and providing opportunities for them to stay uh, and to grow here is also crucial. Now, that ties into your question about COVID uh, and the, the, the workforce of the future. I, I guess uh, I'll make two points. One, which I sort of learned and, and, and developed this perspective over the past year or two. And the second one is an aha of the last two months. Uh, the, 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 the aha that took a year, that was a kind of a year ago, was this idea of remote workers. There are talented people around the world in cities across the world, in cities across the United States, who could do their job anywhere who might very well, especially if they're like in a family formation stage, uh, which is kind of a peculiar phrase, but you know, they've got young kids or they're rethinking their lifestyle, they wanna buy a house. Well, they, they might say, heck, I, I don't need to live in Manhattan or San Francisco or, or um, you, know, you, you name it. I could do this job on, in, a, in a community that's a little smaller, that's a little less crazy, a little less uh, high maintenance. And so, that attraction of remote workers has been has been um, a really ingenious idea that others had and that we've we've been able to capitalize on with Tulsa Remote. The other idea, the second idea that I mentioned, which I really sort of just realizing over the last couple of months, when I see these announcements from let's say Twitter, Facebook, Google, uh, and beyond, that they're going to work remotely for for the for for the long term, uh, and simultaneously opening themselves up to say, we can find talent to work for our companies anywhere. I think that's a very exciting and powerful notion for rural America, for mid-sized cities like the, you know, the Pittsburghs and the Tulsas and the Memphises, et cetera, so that people who are, for whatever reason, want to live in what, next to their families or because they're connected to their communities, they can stay. Uh, and also have reached their dreams uh, to, to work, you know, for, for some of the greatest companies uh, in the world and, and, and do both at the same time. Now, if you want to, you know, be a Broadway uh, actor, well, you know, it's going to be tough to do it here. You know, you probably need to go to Broadway. Uh, but there are a lot of opportunities that all of a sudden are, are kind of now spread everywhere. You might use the word it's been democratized. I think that's a, I think that's a good term. Great. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the pandemic is, uh, with, with everything negative that is bringing to our society and our people, is also uh, allowing more flexibility that, indeed, for families uh, can be, uh, you know, relieved and that finally, you know, they are, uh, the workplace is being more flexible that allows, allow them to uh, be parents and stay with their family. I think the last point that um, the, the George Kaiser Family Foundation is focusing on which I believe is indeed an essential uh, part of building a stronger community. And as you said, Ken, it's about the people, right? Like everything is about the people at the end of the day, is that you want to provide uh, people with economic opportunities, but also quality of life. And, uh, and one thing that Mike coined in a former conversation that we had uh, was that before the pandemic, people wanted space, but now people need space, right? They need the space, uh, you know, for social distancing. Um, and so can you tell, very shortly tell us a little bit about what you are doing in terms of uh, social activity and, and providing, you know, this quality of life uh, that, you know, we all need at the end of the day? Yeah, you know, this is something I can really just kind of speak to as a, as a person. I don't have great you know, expertise or any academic credentials in, in answering this question. But, you know, I, I, I think we as, as, a, as, 
as, as people in communities. We, we, we want culture, we, we want stimulation, we, we want a rich and vibrant life. Uh, and we have some assets here in Tulsa that, that, have been his, that are historically ours, a strong symphony, opera, ballet, uh, a tolerant community. But we also uh, believe strongly that, that we need to give some shots in the arm uh, to our, our civic uh, uh, fabric through investments in, in green spaces. We've got a great little pocket park uh, in the center of our downtown called, called Guthrie Green. Uh, the gathering place that was mentioned earlier is a really one of the most distinctive public um, parks that have been created in, in the last century here. We're very proud of that effort. Some people, some people call it where, where Disneyland meets Central Park. Yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful <laughs> and memorable uh, and, and, and diverse uh, experience. Uh, you know, we've had some kind of unconventional ideas to bring the Woody Guthrie archives uh, back home to Oklahoma and create a Woody Guthrie Center. We actually acquired the Bob Dylan materials and, we're, and there'll be a Bob Dylan Center that opens here. I think a, a you know, an, a, uh, an asset uh, that we also are exploring and celebrating and using to challenge ourselves is our history, whether it's our Native American history and also uh, our history about race and race relations and the 100th anniversary of the uh, race massacre of 1921. I mean, people, people want, well, you can't escape history, uh, but I think, I think people accept history as long as you're grappling with it. And it's, it's propelling you forward in certain ways as you, uh, as you do the work of digging through it. And that's something that we're also very committed to here. And, and I, 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 I think while all of us can do better, we're, we're working towards that and it's making our community uh, a, a, a more consequential uh, uh, experience and a richer place to, to live in a, in, a deeper, in a deeper sense. Thanks, Ken. Another program I'm a big fan of is it's the Tulsa Atlee, um, Tulsa Artist Fellowship, excuse me, which empowers artists uh, to come to Tulsa and create their art from Tulsa and they are uh, given um, uh, a stipend, a, a place to live, um, as well as a studio so that they can work. Uh, this is just amazing. I think we need more art. It's, uh, it's hard now to, to sustain uh, yourself as an artist. And this park, this park is just amazing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a, it's a half a billion investment. Uh, so it's really something phenomenal. Uh, and if you go to Tulsa, you, you must go there. Um, thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to um, briefly you know, speak about uh, the vision and the future, which has been uh, reinforced lately with a 50 million multi-year investment announcement uh, with this vision of making uh, Tulsa a tech center. Um, and I think we've, we've touched uh, on some of the topics around this uh, in our conversation, but can you materialize this in like, uh, you know, what, what's happening, what's, what's the next year uh, looking like uh, for, for Tulsa? I think we're in the very early stages of, of exploring how to make investments in sectors, whether it's education or innovation or entrepreneurship that can give life to those opportunities and those, those, those sectors, uh, to, whether it's to create companies, uh, to, to build companies, uh, or to stimulate creative people to go on their own uh, journeys to, to, be, uh, to be entrepreneurs uh, in those fields and others. Mike, how would, you, uh, how would you add to that? Yeah, I think that this is really, the exact time where we think that some of our local startups are starting to get some real momentum, um, as well as we have, you know, our first graduates coming out of Holberton, so coming up in the, in, in the end of the year, and we will have like really a plethora of technical talent, you know, coming, you know, into the market. And at the same time, we're starting to have some real traction with folks expanding into Tulsa. And then that's all in addition to all of these remote workers that are coming in. And so at the same time, we have our challenges, you know, Tulsa was built is largely a, oil and gas town and aerospace town those are two not, not two sectors that are that are that are you know in their full swing right now and so i think the way we're thinking is this is our moment of transition 
And this is our moment of saying, okay, you're gonna go from one economy and into this other economy, and we're putting all the different frameworks um, you know, around it to, to hopefully make that successful for both individuals and companies uh, to succeed. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny, I, uh, a friend of mine works at Google, um, and she works in the kind of the, I don't wanna like misstate her title, but she works kind of in the space of, of uh, kind of equitable workforce development or like talent development, talent pipeline. And she told me that if we had 500 uh, diverse engineers in Tulsa, that they would consider setting up an office. And that to me is like the goal. Like that to me is like, you know, if we could be there by 2023 uh, with partners like Holberton um, and our local universities, uh, especially TU, which has a great STEM program, um, you know, that, that to us would be really, really be kind of a, a uh, I, I would call it a kind of confirmation that we've really arrived. And not that we would, can, we can still arrive without that, but that would be like a true kind of stamp in my opinion, and, that, and, and that, that would be one of many kind of things we're working towards. Definitely, this is, is not a, you know, a one year or two year uh, type of work, it's like a work that will uh, take effect and benefit over decades. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sure in the year to come, we'll start to see the early results. Um, I think something that's truly unique, um, like we spoke about this at the beginning of the conversation, is that this very ambitious goal, uh, as you say, can that generally is um, a work that's done by states, um, you know, and countries, is done with a, a philanthropic organization. So what are you think are, are the pros and the cons and the limitation, um, you know, of doing this uh, with a, through philanthropy? Yeah, I think if we're, you know, being honest with ourselves about the scale of these ambitions, you know, equal opportunity for all or you know, transforming an economy you know it's a, a particular philanthropy is you know kind of a small actor in 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 the, in the scope of what is required uh, uh, there's a level of coordination and co-investment that's that's required really to make things happen some people talk about a flywheel i mean to really to really uh you you create something that then has a momentum of its own that's a lot bigger than than just any particular partner and with regard to to you know some of these giant social challenges we we have i i clearly philanthropy is a drop in in the bucket uh compared to the resources required to give every child an equal opportunity to have an educated workforce etc but i do think philanthropy can be good at um trying new things uh, uh ex having a high risk tolerance to fail you know this tulsa remote idea right now it looks like a great success but i remember being real nervous that we'd look silly uh, trying to do that and or that you know people might criticize it for you know recruiting a bunch of people from outside here to come here uh, or that people would come here and they'd hate it and we'd be embarrassed you know I mean and I, but you you know it doesn't really it's not that risky for us to try and if it if it's a flop you know we can move on and try something else so I do think I, I do think philanthropy whether it's about education or whether it's about ec ec economic development can try things. Uh, and if they catch on, then you try real hard to find sustaining support through the government or through the private sector or for the from the broader community. So I, I think the, the special role of experimenting and catalyzing and risk-taking uh, for bigger goals uh, around, around community change and community growth is probably our our sweet spot. I try, I try to try to try to be true to that. That's amazing. Like so much of what you say uh, resonate with me as an entrepreneur from Silicon Valley. Those are the exact words that we use for startups. And you know, I really see Tulsa as an amazing startups, as you say that as uh, is, is willing to try things that are ambitious, willing to fail, learn from it, and iterate, right, and constantly improve and experiment. And I truly see Tulsa as a, as a leading city that's showing how a community can change for the best. And, uh, you know, I think it's very inspiring and um, I wish you the best. And us, because we are part of this, I'm very proud that, uh, you know, we, we are working together and Holberton is, is present in this amazing ecosystem. Ken, Mike, thanks a lot for, uh, Thank you know, for having sharing us. 
all Thank of this you. with us. And um, we'll uh, follow your progress and go Tulsa. Thank yeah. you. Go over there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.